Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, isolation Television from Expedition Kayaks. Rob, welcome. Well, we're uh, we're suitably <laughs> we're suitably socially distanced. Yeah. But um, we've got a number of products in our range that take a little bit of time to put in. They're pretty cool DIY projects in their own right, uh, and we figured some of you might have some time on your hands. And uh, this is the first of a little series we're going to do on how to put in the products we've developed into your kayak. Uh, the first one we've got is the, the Bigfoot foot plate system. Um, something we developed five years ago. Yep, five years ago. Um, built in carrying bar. Built in carrying bar, Australian made. Mm -hmm. Designed by a very, uh, well, made by a very clever fellow called Greg Davis that uh, we've known as a paddler as well uh, for, for many years. Uh, we know it's a good product because it's been out there in the market for that amount of time, um, and we've got a lot of good feedback from it, how simple it is to install and how well it actually works in the boat. So, here's the, here's the, the, the centerpiece of the whole system. This is actually a foot bar, which allows you a far more secure and powerful position to put your feet. It's tilted at an angle, which just so happens to be a very popular angle used for ocean racing skis. We figured we'd tried a few different angles, but this one worked the best. And so why reinvent the wheel if that one's already working? We figured we'd go with that. Now let's compare it with one of the systems that it replaces. Many people have replaced this system with this system. There's no criticism of the, uh, the smart track system I'm having in the right hand here. This is a system that um, is extremely convenient. And for people like rental operators and those sorts of businesses where convenience is actually the most important thing, this is clearly a far more easy way to adjust length. You just have to ask yourself, relative to comfort and ergonomics, whether convenience is actually the most important factor for you. And in most cases, once people set these systems up for a while, they never get changed. Often they'll be set, adjusted, one or two times just to tweak them and then they're never changed again so this might be this convenience might be solving a problem that doesn't really exist now the other thing about this is this one attaches to the side of the boat now by attaching to the side of the boat just a bilge here you can see where those attachment screws are there there's one of these in there what happens is it forces you to always paddle with your feet out towards the outside edges Added to that, this is a very small surface area for your foot and your toe to work with. Third thing is, this ingenious system that actually routes the stainless steel cable around this little pulley and back through the sub-assembly here, and then back to the rudder, means that there's a fair bit of transmission lag between when you actually use the pedal and when the rudder responds at the other end of the boat. By comparison, the, smart, the um, Bigfoot system is a completely direct system. There's no change in direction or change in tension in the, uh, in the cabling between where it leaves the back of the pedal and where it actually attaches to the rudder. So there you have it. It's a, it's, it has a few other advantages other than bringing your feet closer together. Very firm, large surface area to put the ball of your foot onto. Um, big pedal area for your toes to work against. Infinite adjustment allowed by the um, by this nylon strap. Very simple system, but simple sometimes very good. So that's the that's the actual centerpiece of the system, and that's why we've done it. The thing that people have reported when they put them in their boats, again without without singling out Smart Track, but a lot of these uh, are off the shelf. Um, very popular rudder pedal systems is that when you do put your foot down on the pedal there's a noticeable lag and it might not be able to be counted in seconds but you can feel it there's a definite time lapse between when your foot goes down and when you feel a response from the rudder having paddled race skis and, and k boats now for many years as well their direct foot plate systems like the Bigfoot, that doesn't happen. The moment you put pressure on, you feel a, a movement. And it does give you a lot more confidence in the way your boat's going to behave, especially when you're chasing following seas where you need a lot of short, sharp movement 
and when you see a see a problem in front of you, you need to respond to it quickly. These are also these are also extremely rugged, even just in terms of torque through here. This system here, all being made out of marine grade aluminium, is substantially stronger. Well, or not substantially more robust. So here we have it. So how does it actually work, and how hard is it to install? Okay. Well, the first thing that I'd like to draw to your attention is after releasing these screws in the front of the footplate area, it's then infinitely adjustable for width. And there's a substantial amount of adjustment, and that's adjustable on both sides. So what that means is that it will fit boats that vary in four depth width. There'll be some very wide recreational boats that will be wider than this, and um, that's one of the limitations of the product, but we're talking very wide all the way through to some extremely narrow racing boats, just a small number, where the narrowness at this end means that these need to be trimmed. In the cases where that happens, all we'd ask you to do, if you've got any doubts, is to send us the width, approximate width of the boat where you think you want to put the system. So there's that part of the system. Now, what you replace the actual original system in your boat with, if it's fitted through the sides, is this particular track or rail here, side rail. This system that we've just discussed here, once you've got your width right, you tighten up these screws and the system is fixed in the place at the correct leg length. How it attaches to the boat is through this side rail. Now if you look at the side rail front on, you'll notice that that's not a perfect right angle. And what we've tried to do is come up with an angle through here that is compatible with the widest number of kayaks possible, this angle in cross section. Uh, so here's our crossbar, and we can see, we've already, as we've already discussed, it's telescoping, and that gives us an infinite variability over width. We also have our side track, now our side rail. Our side rail is actually going to fit inside the boat and it has conveniently been drilled with a very generic hole spacing. And you'll notice in this case, this one had a smart track in it, and you'll notice that it's actually the same hole spacing exactly. It's amazing how many of the brands use this hole spacing. So if you can imagine that this is actually bolted onto the side of your boat, there's another one of these bolted on the other side of the boat, then it's simply a matter of working out where your leg length goes along this track and dropping in the system, this crossbar system, onto your side rail when it's inside the boat. Now the good thing about this is because this screw is actually threaded permanently into the bracket that's on the side of this crossbar, what that means is that you don't need two hands to actually attach this screw inside the boat. And we have here a little um, wing nut that's got an extension welded onto it. The advantage of this is without even being able to see it, <laughs> without even being able to necessarily see what's going on, I should be able to reach in and screw that in place. Now, it can be a very inaccessible spot and an area that you can't easily get two hands into or even two hands in your head into. So this little cutaway here, geometry of this whole rail system and these wing nuts makes it a whole lot easier to attach your big foot within the confines of the cockpit of your boat which is what you need to do in order to get it adjusted properly so there we go that one's done too so that's how your system will look inside the boat there'll be a little bit of angle on these brackets which is built into the system as well for the taper of the sides of the boat and that's how it will sit within your boat. Now, you'll notice that these, these foot pedals are sprung from behind just with a simple piece of shock cord and they are infinitely adjustable on these nylon webbing straps which attach directly to the rudder cables. And that's the entire system. 
The only other parts that you need in order to install this into an existing kayak are the screws, washers and nuts that actually attach to the side of your boat. In some cases you may choose to change the existing cabling that runs from the rudder through to this end of the kayak. Okay, so to get started with actually installing a Bigfoot, first thing you've got to do is detach the existing rudder cable. I've already detached it on that side, and you can see I've already detached it on this side. Now, you'll notice there's already a little piece of fishing line attached to this. What I'm going to do with this side is I'm going to show you one tricky way of pulling through a new cable in the process of installing your Bigfoot. So, what we'll do is we'll leave that there for a moment, bearing in mind that we now have no attachments at this end of the system. Now all we have to do at this end of the system is release the attachment screws that are holding the existing system into place, which you just heard unceremoniously bump into the bottom of the boat. Pull that out and in this case I want to replace my existing rudder lines in the process of doing my Bigfoot installation. I'll be able to get my two millimeter race spec, tie it onto the other end of the cable here. And the little knot that I'm going to do is just simply a loop. I'm going to pass the end of the fishing line through that loop. several times and the knot that I'm going to create looks like that. Now the advantage of that as you can see is it pulls straight ahead. So now what I'm going to do is feed this stainless steel cable through the tube as far as it will go, which I've done there. Then I'll move back to this end of the system. And it may require me to get this started here. So get that started. There it is. Now as I say, a bit of a laugh. And if my knots hold tight, then I'll end up being able to draw my new rudder cable through from the other end. And being race spec, being a type of high strength, low stretch technical cord, makes an excellent replacement for stainless steel and I can tie knots in it so I don't have to worry about swaging it. So here's the, uh, the old system now, completely removed from the boat, including cables. And here's the new race spec, or, or sometimes people call it Spectra, 2mm, and that will become our new rudder cable. Okay, so plan B is simply to get some heavy fishing line, in this case it's about 50-60 kilogram braking strain and use this same nail knot to attach to the end a piece of finer fishing line in this case uh, four kilogram fishing line and then again tie that same knot I think it's called a nail knot somebody might want to correct me if it's not a nail knot but there it is pull it through locks and there we go so you feed this through it's come through the other end okay so it's come through at the other end and I can just see it starting to pull this line through at this end here so there's my alternative strategy for pulling my my line through okay so here you have the attachments 
that are going to hold my side rail onto the boat and here are the fittings and, and uh, fixings so I've got some screws which are very similar to the ones that were on the original nylock nuts 316 stainless and some large washers which are just to finish off and spread the load around the track when I've got it in place actually they'll go on that side of the track obviously this is a potential water ingress point so I normally just put a ring of Sikaflex 291 a bead about three millimeters in diameter just around each of these two fixing points okay so the next the next step in the process is to replace the existing foot side rail with um with one of these which is the bigfoot side rail so there are some holes in the side of the boat and it's amazing how generic these hole spacings are and the diameter of those screw holes also seems to be very generic and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this on the inside corresponding with those two and affix this to the inside of the hull using those existing screw spacings. So now what I've done is I've uh, loosely attached this side rail to the side of the boat using one of these screws through the hull, a washer on the inside and then a nut on the washer, like so. And I've put some Sikaflex around here before I've put it hard up against the hull. Now I'm going to tighten it in position. So now you can see we've got the crossbar attached the side bracket screwed onto the side tracks, the side tracks installed in position, and it's all that's left to do now is to attach the rudder lines to the new foot plate. So the next step is to attach the rudder line to this adjustable strap, which attaches in turn to the pedal in the Bigfoot system. So this can be done just simply by feeding that through there and tying it off here. To give it a little more flexibility, I like to actually attach a split ring, which you can easily purchase at any boating shop. Prefer a stainless steel one. Some people use cleats, any number of retaining rings, or just straight onto the system if you prefer a lighter, more minimalist setup. So here's my uni knot for tying it all together. That attaches to my split ring. I'll trim this off in a minute, but just to show you how the whole system goes together, I then simply fit this onto my split ring through the pre-stitched loop on the Bigfoot pedal. And that is the, is the system as it sits in the boat. Okay, so all I've done down this end is I've just replaced the, uh, the existing stainless steel cable with exactly the same hardware that comes with the Smart Track rudder, which is probably one of the all-time best rudders we've, we've been able to get hold of over the years. Outstanding bit of hardware. And I'm just going to tie this off in the same way that I did at the other end. And that will mean the system is, uh, is closed. We've now got a direct connection of spectra all the way from here to the uh, Bigfoot toe, toe pedal. Um, very direct system, very simple system. We've taken the whole foot plate assembly out of the boat to show you the last two steps because it's easier to see them that way. So you need to assume that you've got this at exactly the same the correct width inside the boat. This is all happening inside the cockpit. These are these are tight and nice and tight, but finger tight, but nice and tight. And then all that's left to do is you need to 
tension these straps until you get the length of them just right. And then to make sure the whole system is secure, you just simply tighten these screws in the plate. That's the whole system fitted and ready for action. So Mark, you've, uh, you've just filmed all of that. This I is, have. Yeah. And, uh, and what do you reckon? Did that intimidate you? I know you well, get a bit nervous around it's not my tools. It's not my, uh, not my forte. I did do a cool thing with the Leatherman once, if you remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, watching, watching that from behind the camera lens this morning, I would say that's something I can do pretty, uh, pretty easily myself. And that's saying something. <laughs> so this is an upgrade to your boat that you can do yourself. It doesn't cost a lot of money. But the number of times people have said to us they were amazed at how it actually made the boat perform better. So if you're happy with your boat, but you want to make it an even better boat, we honestly think this is an upgrade worth doing. It's, uh, it's on our website for sale, the Bigfoot. Um, if you're in another part of the world other than Australia, we, we do freight them out all over the world. Surprising number, actually. It's one of those little cult following products that people seem to find out about, tell their mates about, and they see, you know, everyone in part of the world wants them. So give us a shout if you'd like one. Uh, drop us an email at marketexpeditionkayaks.com or you can order through our website at expeditionkayaks.com. Hope you've enjoyed watching Rob run you through it. Well done, mate. Thanks, Mark. First effort at making a film to, to camera. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <clears throat>